Lisa Di Pasquale, welcome to American Glutton Podcast. Thanks for having me. I'm so excited. Thanks so much for doing this. By the way, we have chatted a lot. We've done a lot of texting and but we've never we've never actually talked before. This is fun. Yeah. And I've I've been binging on the podcast, on the videos. And I feel like I have talked to you because we've gone through so many similar things. I mean, I was watching the Will Sasso one today and I was just like, I'm not a weirdo. I'm not a weirdo rain man that calculates chairs that I need to fit in. No, I think that's a, I mean, I still do that. I still get nervous about chairs and, um, and, and I still feel I'm, I'm rational to do so, you know, like, but I, but I probably don't need to do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I would say only in the last year did I stop traveling with my seatbelt extender on planes. Yeah. Yeah, I owned one of those too. I think I bought one and then I stole one from a flight once. Um, but that was that was a forever thing. Yeah, well, you know, I think we you probably first saw me with Michael Malice's podcast and um you know, I did that. And I think you had mentioned me that on when you did it pretty soon after, and I was, you know, tickled and, that you even watched it. And so what I ended up doing is I signed my seatbelt extender to Michael and gave it to him. Oh my God. That's amazing. By the way, he is a sicko who loves stuff and things. Um, yeah, I know. That's got to be a prized possession of his, I bet. Yeah, I mean, I've been to his house here, um, Simon, Texas, and I've asked him, um, you know, where it is, and he, you know, he hasn't displayed it yet. But to be fair, the, the walls are still pretty, pretty empty. He has some more decorating to do. It's a work in progress. Yeah, but that should be framed and up on a wall for sure. <laughs> like a before and after photo. <laughs> yeah, exactly. What has your relationship with your weight been like? Can we talk, start that off? Because you've gone through a radical transformation. Yeah, I mean, I it's funny. I oh, I joke that the last time I was, uh, you know, an average weight or a good weight was when I was born because I was born a month early. So I was a preemie. <laughs> and it's funny because there have been studies showing that preemies tend to be overweight because for the early part of your life, it's like eat, 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 you know, on top of being, you know, Italian and Southern, right? And um, probably around age four was when I went over the line and really became, you know, a chubby girl. Um, and it's, you know, I've never dipped into a normal range, but, you know, I've gone to like fat day cams. I've tried different things. Um, you know, I remember, I want to say maybe when I was six or seven, um, I lived in Tallahassee, Florida and the local university I think they had put like a, an ad for a clinical trial. It was like some kind of nutritional cookie. And so my mom signed me up for that. And I did that for a little while. Um, and was it just, you just add this cookie to your diet and that's supposed no, to change like, everything instead of ever, anything else, you know, Got just it. like anything else. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I think you were allowed to put peanut butter on it. So obviously I did that. Um, <laughs> and then it was just, you know, through middle school, high school, high school was when I did like the, the day camp thing where it was, um, you know, giving you like B12 shots and eating a lot less kind of similar to, um, you know, I think Will Sasso talked about something similar where it was kind of like a placebo, like it's not the liquid, it's that you vastly, you know, cut your calories. And so I think from, that's probably the most normal I got was senior year in high school. Um, I weighed, uh, under 200. I don't really remember the weights, uh, probably like 170, but as close to normal as I had, I had ever been. Um, and then, you know, I got the freedom of college and then the freedom of having a salary job. And that's when it was just, uh, you know, out of control and just kept gaining. And my highest was 320. Wow. And was when when you go back through your childhood, were these things that you were interested in or were they things that your parents were just going like, here's what we're going to do now? No, I mean, my parents were divorced, so um, it definitely wasn't like a talk, but um, my my mother and my sister were both normal. 
Um, and so there, there was kind of like an issue. And I think, you know, they definitely, um, you know, wanted to, my, both my, my parents wanted to, to help me, but kind of like, weren't really sure. I mean, they, you know, were boomers. So it's kind of like, they grew up with the pyramid and, you know, a blueberry muffin's a healthy breakfast because it's, you know, wheat and fruit. Right. <laughs> and, um, I think they were kind of like at a loss. And part of it also is, you know, I'm super sneaky. I mean, they would, could see what I was eating in front of them and, um, you know, whether it was going to like a friend's house or just kind of what I probably thought was covertly, you know, eating some, some amount to always, you know, leave something left in the box or something like that. Um, you know, I think part of them weren't really sure. Yeah. It's coming from, um, you know, if it was big boned or this is just like the way, the way I'm made. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I, Oh, I'm like five four. <laughs> I but I remember being put on diets, lots and lots of diets as a kid, and really like like you say, sneaky. I just remember feeling like this is something that's happening to me that I'm not a participant in, and I'm gonna kind of do whatever I want. I just can't do it in view of my parents and my sister. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I still have the same mindset now. Like when. Uh, I call my com common law husband when he goes, you know, out to get something. The first thing in my head was, if you want a snack, now's the time. Right. You know, when I'm alone in the house. <laughs> yeah. Th I mean, that's one of the things I, I like, you know, I'm, I'm sober and you can't be abstinent from food. <laughs> I wish you could <laughs> not really, but like, uh, like the, some of my guardrails are literally like, okay, I don't eat when my wife is out or if I do, I got to be real careful that I'm not doing that, that I'm not being sneaky because that's my instinct too. It's like, mm -hmm. I'm alone. I can do whatever I want. I can order a pizza. They don't do it. <laughs> yeah. And what sucks is like, he's a, uh, you know, a fit guy and, um, you know, he, he can keep something in the house. Like I remember visiting he, when he lived out in Arizona when I was out there, I had bought um, those Tate's cookies. And then I went out there two months later and the bag's still there. And I'm like, what is wrong with you? You freak. You know? Yeah. That's a one night thing. These were supposed yeah. to be gone the next day. <laughs> yeah. So it's like, we keep stuff in the house. I'm definitely better at it. And especially because I've had, you know, various surgeries. Um, you know, I don't, even though I, you know, could do that, I just don't. And I'm getting a little better um, or I wouldn't say a little better, obviously a lot better. Um, at, at being able to do that. And part of it, you know, helps that I'm with, um, you know, a healthy person. Um, and I think even though my parents may not have struggled and my sister may not have struggled, there were still some unhealthy habits. Like I remember on Halloween, um, you know, the instinct from my mom was, you know, just eat it all tonight and then we'll get rid of it. Right. So that's kind of like the instinct that I had. It's like, eat it now because tomorrow it's going to be gone. Like right. you're not going to get it you know yeah they'll and take I, it away both ways like on one hand she doesn't want me eating candy for two weeks straight you know right i mean yeah don't eat one little candy every day for two weeks eat 20 right now it's sick and then you know it's done <laughs> yeah exactly that's wild yeah i remember being put on a diet and then being rewarded with a week of dieting with a trip to the drive through Mm -hmm. And it was, and, and I, I hadn't actually dieted. It was just what they saw me eat seemed to perceive, they perceived as being on a diet. Oh man, those I mean, are. I don't remember it not being, I mean, my memories are, you know, don't go back as far as, you know, three or something and not being on a diet. So, and it wasn't like necessarily prescribed diet, but just like something about, you know, I'm on, you know, I have to watch what I eat and, and that sort of thing. And, you know, I remember early on, I would say, I mean, at least say fourth or fifth grade when my weight became more than my mom's. Um, I'm less today as of like a week or so ago than I was in fifth grade. Wow. That's incredible. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah. I'm not, you know, like a little bit taller, so, you know, it's not, that impressive but <laughs> I, mean, I know it's pretty fucking impressive though it's pretty great 
Yeah. I mean, that's something you should pat yourself on the back for that. Yeah. Um, I'm not with my surgery but did, did, did they uh did they put you on any really weird diets you you were in you were not raised in Los, you were in florida so i don't yeah. know if they got super weird out there los I, angeles got weird i was trying to think of like the weird diets um i remember fit for life we had yeah. like listened to the audio tape one time like driving down to the beach or something um so it wasn't weird it was more just like that was i think they were the fit for life was big on fruit and vegetables um I didn't do anything weird like the cabbage diet. And part of that was probably, you know, they did have some sense that, you know, I was a child. Um, the cookies, um, you know, just the like protein bars, that was the high school one. But I don't really remember anything weird. Um, slim fast shakes, you yeah. know, the 80s stuff. Uh, or, you know, I think it was like, what, two, two meal replacements or something and a regular meal. Yeah. Um, sensible. It had to be a sensible, sensible yeah, sensible diet. Um, but you know, even now we know liquid just does not give you the full sensation. Like right. just straight and it and slim fast was not even like I don't even think particularly high protein. It might yeah. they might be by now, but um, you know, there's just so much also that what was perceived as being on a diet, like having snack wells. So I, I hope it's not bad that I'm calling out all these companies. I'm just trying to think of examples. Um, you know, we know what they did to make things low fat, which now we know doesn't is is not good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, the trade, the trade off of fat for sugar and and it's they've they've done a lot of weird, weird things with food. I I, I was put once on a some kind of a diet where I was given it like electrified water and told just to drink a cap full of that water before I ate anything. It didn't absolutely nothing, but like, and I, I recently saw a guy again, I don't want to call anybody up, but a, a fairly big popular guy on Instagram who was showing like doing something with a metal rod in water to change the water's pH balance. And, and <laughs> yeah change the ions or something and and i literally was like had flashbacks of me as a little kid with this water where it's like that does not that's not going to make you lose weight like this is not a solution to anything yeah and that actually speaking of flashbacks i remember uh i was at a friend's house and uh i would go and i would steal her mom's dexatrim oh wow my mom so I, and I said they were giving away free samples at the at the grocery store. <laughs> that can that can work. I mm -hmm. was I was put on Femfen uh, when I was very young, and after like a week of not sleeping at all, I was taken off of it. But that I I do remember not also not having an appetite while I was on it. Yeah, and then as an adult, it was like the sky's the limit. You know, I did the hydroxy cut while it was the bad one, but the <laughs> one that worked and. <laughs> Um, and then, you know, I started looking at, uh, surgical options. Yeah. Is that what you did? You did, uh, what did you do? Yeah. So, um, in 2009 was when I had reached, uh, 320. Um, and you know, I was thinking what's kind of unique about the two of us is both of us, you know, despite people saying in our industries, you have to look a certain way, but a lot, both of us kind of reached like really good success at, uh, you know, our highest weight. So it kind of like went against the grain. And so in 2009, I was running this um, big conference called CPAC. And uh, as the head of it, one of the things that I did was introduce the final speaker who happened to be Rush Limbaugh. And there we are both on stage in black because it's slimming. And um, we were the same size. You know, I'm a 20 something might've been 30 something year old girl. Um, yeah, 32. And, uh, we look the same size. And as you can imagine, you know, the hate mail that I got was just like off the charts from, from everybody, you know, even from, I mean, I, sometimes I think conservatives are, are worse when it comes to that sort of thing. Um, and you know, I'm supposed to be on their side and that's when I looked into, um, the lap band. And so, I didn't want to do the gastric bypass because I thought that was like too permanent and it kind of freaked me out that, you know, it was like major 
cutting and all that kind of stuff. And so I got the lap, the lap band and uh, I lost, I think about 70 pounds. So I think the lowest I got was maybe 250. And uh, then just like everything else, I mean, you kind of find a way to cheat around it. And, you know, they started calling the lap band the milkshake diet because you can, you know, drink a milkshake, um, you know, an 800 calorie milkshake, no problem. But, you know, you really got to try hard to chew some grilled chicken, you know? Right. And uh, then I got back up eventually to uh, the weight that I was at uh, by 2018. So nine years. Uh, and by that point, you know, I wasn't filling the lap band, like what you're supposed to do. It's basically like an inner tube that goes around your esophagus. And when you fill it with liquid through this port, it makes it tighter. So there's a permanent port or a temporary permanent port? Yeah, it's a port that's like kind of by your belly button. And then the the band thing is like by your esophagus or on your esophagus. And so they just go in with a, a syringe uh, into the port and just put in a little bit of liquid to tighten it up. And that's supposed to, it, it makes your esophagus like down to the size of like a, a straw. So you can really just get liquid through. So you really have to chew real food. And there's lots of like cheater foods. I mean, crackers, potato chips, you know, anything that you can get like really, really small, um, which unfortunately is generally not healthy food. Right. You know, I mean, I hadn't had, a, I don't even know when I had had a, you know, a steak or something. Um and so in 2018, by the time I had started to gain uh, almost almost 320, I don't think I had gotten quite to 320, I went to get a fill and the doctor, it was a different doctor. And he said, you know, we're no one is really doing lapping surgery anymore. And I kind of knew uh, on some level because I had seen lots of, you know, famous people that have gotten that surgery and that's also something I feel bad that I kind of keep in my head when it seems like cheating. There are plenty of people that have gotten surgery and not, you know, been able to to maintain or or get to a goal weight. And so yeah. at that point, he said the RNY was kind of the the gastric bypass was like the gold standard. And um, you know, it had been around I think since like the seventies. And you know, in my head, um, you know, because I was in my forties by then. And, you know, I was starting to see high blood pressure, like major swelling in my feet. Um, you know, I wasn't a kid that could grow out of it anymore, like 20s or 30s, where, you know, maybe you are healthy at any size and your blood work comes back great, right? And at that point, I just, even though I was still kind of scared about the surgery, really the, the only thought in my head was if something happens to me, during the surgery or immediately after my family will know I did like the ultimate thing. Right. You know? So that way they won't feel guilty or anything. They'll just know, well, at least, you know, she did the ultimate thing she could have done, you know? And I thought, well, at least I, I, I could leave them. I could leave the earth and leave them with that. Right. That you were making that attempt. Mm -hmm. That's heartbreaking. Um, but yeah, well, I had a good, <laughs> you had a good outcome yes thank god right i don't know if i've ever mentioned that to them so uh you know hopefully they they won't feel that and there's no reason they should feel guilty obviously um but yeah so in 2018 i i did the rny and you know since then have kind of steadily gone down i didn't get you know the pandemic 15 or anything like that is it is it a rough surgery no, it, it, um, I mean, you're not compared to the ones we, the ones I just had, but, uh, it's still laparoscopic. Um, you know, you still have to follow. It's kind of nice because your system is, you know, been, they remove like two thirds of your stomach and make its own little pouch and then remove, I think around the same as your, the same of that, like two thirds say, um, of your small intestines. So the thing that appealed to me about it that was different than, oh, and they removed all the lap band stuff. So I don't have like that port or anything anymore. So like I lost like a quick, like two or three ounces immediately. Um, and then whatever small intestines way. But um, because it takes that so much of your small intestines out, they, when you eat sugar or 
for some people, carbs and like anything like super high fat, um, it, it goes into your system faster and they call it, it's like the worst name ever. They call it dumping syndrome. And so that's like the sugar dumping and you get nauseous and I don't like the feeling. Some people, you know, persevere <laughs> and still, and still, you know, eat, uh, whatever I would say, um, I could probably eat maybe two or three small bites of ice cream without having that, but probably a quarter cup or half a cup, then I would, I would get it. Right. Um, that appealed to me because, uh, you know, even though I knew just from the lab band that, you know, I, uh, w had the will <laughs> to keep going if, uh, I felt bad, um, I like that it was it was really a permanent a permanent thing. Um, and then just over the the last five or so years since doing that, when I've reached a plateau, um, you know, I would I would try other things or not try, but I would add other things to the mix, like doing daily exercise. Um, you know, a year and a half ago, I hired a personal trainer, um, and actually, it's a great a great setup because uh, she used to be my boss and then became a personal trainer. So like, I don't feel like I can get away with like, I'm paying you. So I'm not able to show up today. I mean, That's to me, awesome. It's akin to not showing up for work. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I've had personal <laughs> trainers and I noticed that my, in the beginning, my um kind of my MO would be like, try to get them talking mm -hmm. as, as soon as possible, because then you're doing less work if you get them and you could find chatty trainers and it's super counterintuitive, but I, I so fought tooth and nail going to the gym when I started going, I just didn't want to be there at all. Yeah. I'm not, I don't, I mean, I hate to say, it, I'm not sure if I'll ever be, you know, a workout person. Like it's not something I crave, you know, now I've gone on, I'm going on five weeks, not having done any physical activity and I'm not, Oh, I can't wait to get back in the gym. I can't wait to be able to move normal. Um, but yeah, I'm just never going to be, you know, that type of person, like my husband who can, who, you know, misses, uh, doing free weights and stuff. And, um, you know, for me, I, I have to make it easy, easy as possible. We have a closed in dining room, you know, with a door and ironically, we made our dining room, the gym. So it's got the gym floor, and <laughs> the free weights and, you know, everything, a, a TV, everything you could want. Um, and, you know, I can't say, well, I don't feel like driving over. Um, you know, it's two steps away. Right. Was there anything you had to get him on board with? Cause I, I know that my wife is super supportive of me, but there are times where I have to go like, Hey, can I, I'm really trying to be super strict right now. Can you keep even the halo top out of the house? Have you had to have th those types of conversations with him? And how did those go? Um, I don't think we've had to have it. I mean, sometimes he'll, Bring it because I do. I mean, I like buy. I'm I'm a good baker. Uh, like I mentioned, I'm Southern and Italian, so I'm obviously a good cook. Um, I like baking, and you know, when he when we got together and moved out here, um, but I put on about fifteen or twenty pounds when he moved here, and part of that was using him being here as an excuse, like baking and making meals, and you know, having um, I wouldn't say larger portions, but stuff that I wouldn't normally had ha have had. And, you know, he would say, you know, you don't have to, you know, make this because by himself, I mean, he's not going to, you know, eat a whole cake before it, it goes bad necessarily. Right. And I mean, he's, he's been very supportive of that. He's known me or we've known each other when I was at my heaviest. We haven't been together except for the last uh, two years. Um, so, yeah, I mean, he he like won the lottery. He got like a fat girl personality and, you know, the current... <laughs> the current girlfriend. Um, but yeah, he's been really supportive. He doesn't, uh, he's not like a big, I mean, I say he's not a big sweet eater, but you know, we do have stuff in the house. I mean, for, for Valentine's day, I got him these luxury cookies, uh, called the last crumb. They're like $150 for 12 cookies. Jesus. I know. <laughs> they're, they're really good. I think they're based in LA. Um, but you know, I'm also trying to get to a place where I'm like my normal. So he has the cookie. I'll try a bite. And I actually am satisfied with the bite. Right. You know, um, and that's what I want to be. I want to be a normal person, not someone that's always 
on a diet, you know, I think I, we meant, I mentioned to you in DMS, like, I kind of don't know what maintenance is because I've changed my goals. Um, so often that I'm like, like right now I'm below my initial, like fake goal, like the goal that I said I, I should be like when they asked me, I'm below that now. So obviously this isn't my goal, you know? So it's like, I could, you know, have a, a new goal. And, um, you know, just as I strayed from that, when I got, uh, back to, uh, in the 200, the, lo the low 200s, like 201, that's when I hired the, got the personal trainer Yeah. Uh, and was like, okay, I feel like, I mean, aside from, you know, having the extra food, I need to start adding weight training, not even just because of weight loss, but, you know, closing in on 50 and, you know, being a woman, I just need to add more, more muscle. Cause just yoga, uh, isn't, isn't doing it. <laughs> right. Yeah. No resistance training is super helpful for that. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's really the only way to do it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and to me, I kind of rationalized, which is true is that if I have more muscle, then I'm burning more calories just, you know, at, re at rest. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I don't know. That's a fact. And it must work. <laughs> Are you able to eat enough protein? Uh, probably not for, um, you know, what they would say. Um, you know, as I've been healing from my last surgery, uh, I've been having more shakes just mostly because some, you know, at the very beginning, I just didn't really even feel like eating. Um, you know, I try to get there. I, I eat protein first, you know, um, you know, if I'm having a salad, I might pick through the protein first. Right. Yeah. I mean, that's good. I think little habits like that are good to get the protein in. Mm -hmm. But like, for sure, I, I know when I had surgery to remove skin, my doctor was like, eat a lot of protein. And that was before I even was thinking about protein, really. Mm -hmm. I was just at that point in my life demonizing carbs. Mm -hmm. So I tried to eat a lot of protein, but now with anything with muscle, it's protein is super important. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm sure when I, when I try to, um, you know, use like a, a tracker and track it, like generally my goal is 80. It's very rare to get there without having, uh, help like a, a shake where you can just get like a quick 25 grams. Right. Yeah. No, I mean, I have trouble doing it without shakes too. Mm -hmm. You know, otherwise I'm just sitting and eating chicken breasts or eggs, egg whites, which are so boring. I don't like eggs. That's the worst. <laughs> yeah. And those are super packed with protein. And, yep. and like, yeah. And, you know, I can have some egg whites for breakfast, but I don't want to eat, be pouring that into my lunch and stuff like that, you know? Yeah. I mean, I tried carnivore, um, you know, just because I'd, I have friends that do it and, you know, I... I'm a Joe Rogan fan. I tried it for like a month. Um, and, you know, I think I lost some weight. That wasn't kind of the point of it, but, um, you know, it definitely cuts out snacking because you don't, you don't want to snack on pieces of chicken or steak. I mean, even if it was like filet, like that's not a snack. <laughs> no, I want something crunchy. Yeah. yeah for a snack. No matter what they say, none of the, you know, quest or whatever, um, are really that good. The, the only thing that I got, I thought was better than all of that is I would just, um, like bake, you know, straight up Parmesan cheese. That was yeah. like, as good as it can get. And, you know, it has a lot less chemicals and stuff, but, um, that was the only thing that really came close. And that's this is, diet. it's so expensive. This is not carnivore at all, but, um, there's a company called legendary foods. Oh Yeah. I, I think those Pop-Tarts are amazing. And they've got 20 grams of protein in them. I was going to say, I tried them and thought it was going to hurl. You did? Yeah, no, my kids hate them too. I, you know, but I haven't eaten a Pop-Tart. It's in... lower, you know, as uh, as that stuff. Like you might try the the Quest Doritos and I'm like, oh, this isn't bad. And then you try a real Dorito and you're like, oh my God. <laughs> yeah. What is that other stuff? No, I'm so excited. Um uh, legendary foods now is doing chips and i like the pop tarts so much i can't wait to try the chips i'm like giddy well, they had cinnamon buns but what i really liked from them was um they did like nut butters and uh mixed nuts or almonds yeah. or something with like some kind of flavoring on it that i thought were pretty good yeah 
Yeah, the the it's it's snacking is tough. Snacking mm-hmm. is tough on on any diet, I think. Yeah, and well, and the problem with the with the nuts is, I mean, they're just so dense, like calorically, that I kind of just got away from doing from doing nuts because I kind of thought, well, what was I snack? What were my healthy snacks when I was gaining weight? And it tended to be those types of things. Yeah. Right? Versus now, like my healthy snacks, um, when I'm not gaining weight and when I'm losing is you know like a string cheese. Right. When did skin become an issue for you? Um, I would say probably like a year or two ago. I mean, part of it is you don't really know. No, more than that, two years ago at least. Because so that's when I had, I think, my consultation um, with the surgeon. And, you know, it, it's it's kind of hard to know like what is skin and what is still fat, you know? Yeah. But it became more apparent because of my age and it being wrinkled and that kind of crepiness, like, okay, this is, this is skin here. And, um, you know, I remember particularly when I was with my trainer one time, I do it over zoom and I was doing mountain climbers and the noise of my legs hitting my stomach or my stomach going up. Um, I like literally just started crying like while I was doing it. Like, thankfully I was sweating so she wouldn't have noticed, but I just remember hearing that noise. Um, and then also not being comfortable, not being fully clothed while working out all the time. Um, you know, I just, uh, and reaching what I thought at the time was a goal, but like I would still, it was not an option to me that I would ever wear anything sleeveless or wear a shirt tucked in. And that those still weren't options in my mind, um, I think were probably the biggest motivators because I, I functionally, I felt the same. Like I was still dressing the same, you know, I would wear tops that went below my belly um, and, and, you know, would wear long sleeves all the time. Um, you know, I was kind of like, aside from the health benefits, obviously, what it what is it for? So, I mean, I hate that it was so aesthetic, but, you know, that noise also... <laughs> It's just like burned to my brain. No, but I, I, I think too, like, and, I, and tell me if you've, if you experienced any of this, it is really difficult to have some idea of a goal or be working towards something and then arrive in the area, but it be so not yeah, ideal. Right. And then you just kind of think, I mean, you definitely go through a period of, um, you know, never, you're never like never feeling like you're going to be uh, what you were, you're reaching for. But the thing that um, I think discourages people, and I hate to hear it, is when people say they don't want to lose a lot of weight because of loose skin or then don't want to get skin removal surgery because of the scars. And it's just like, I I mean, I get the scar part, you know, if people don't care about loose skin, that's fine. Um, But that you don't want to lose weight because of the the loose skin. I mean, it's just ridiculous. So it always just kind of come back to that and be like, well, I'd rather be like this than, than be what I was before. Yeah, no, me too. A hundred percent. I, 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 I utterly empathize with that idea. Because Mm -hmm. because my skin was such a hindrance and and it was at a time in my life where I was still chasing like. I don't want to say counterproductive, but ideas that weren't based solely in truth, in objective truth, you know, like carbohydrates are evil and they are what they were my only the only thing that was causing me to be fat was carbohydrates. And then so when it came to the skin. You know, I was under the belief for a while that it would tighten up. Mm-hmm. And and then, you know, I was under the belief that buying really expensive red lights would make it go away and getting mineral wraps would make it go away. Right. And, yeah, like, and none of that is going to make, you know, a, a lot of excess skin go away. It's just not. Yeah, I mean, I think there's probably... It depends on the time that stretching, because I know p- women that get pregnant, um, you know, if, even if they gain maybe more than they should, it can go back. But, you know, largely that's that's age that, you know, they weren't overweight for 40 years. They were only overweight for nine months. 
um, you know, those types of things, you know, it might work, but for long, long haulers like us, it just doesn't work. Yeah. No, no, hundred percent. And you kind of have the guilt that, um, I mean, I had immediate guilt after getting skin removal surgery, um, that, you know, on bad days that I had let myself get to the point that I felt like I, I needed it. Right. Right. I mean, no, I, I look at my body all the time and think, what have I done to you? You know, like it, there's, there's a universe where I should be thinking of my body as this gift of life, right? That I'm a miracle of the trillions of sperms and eggs that we're going to come into contact. I got one, right? Mm -hmm. It is somehow like very uh, against the odds that any of us exist. And then I deformed myself and didn't respect myself, you know. And by the way, I got loose skin surgery and then gained weight. And, and <laughs> you know, I like, I don't even think, I might have had some residual loose skin anyway, but I, got more because of my weight gain and like even that haunts me but like i think also we can't you know be too hung up on the past we're we're here today and this is where we are and all we can do is put our best foot forward yeah i mean i was when i was listening to your episode with will sasso i accidentally heard your story but i feel like i'm i'm five weeks out to, uh today so i think i'm past your your point of like day one messing up. Oh my God. It, mine was a total disaster. <laughs> I mean, I still have some issues, um, but nothing, you know, ab abnormal. And then I'm supposedly one week away from not having to wear the compression garments uh, for 18 hours a day. I think there's kind of like some comfort in it. So I imagine I'll still wear them a little bit, but I mean, I do enjoy the breaks. This is the I usually keep my arm ones on because that feels really good. Um, but I took them off. I took them off for the podcast. <laughs> okay. What, what's, where did you have skin removed from? Uh, so from my arms, I can't believe I'm showing this. And anybody that is thinking of this, keep in mind, I'm very early. It's not going to be red, all of that. Um, so I had both arms. I had the floor de lis straight up and then a 360 all the way around where they kind of, you know, saw you in half, I assume, and <laughs> draw everything uh, together. And so I still have some other stuff on my list that I'll probably get maybe around the same time next year, like thighs and uh, chest lift or something. But, um, you know, it was very important to me as like a Dave Ramsey person that I pay cash for everything. Like, I'm not going to finance something like this, especially like, what if I gain weight? Right. Um, <laughs> that would be a tough check to write every month. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. Um, so, you know, and I know like, that's like, I mean, I'm a conservative saying this, that's tremendous pr privilege to be able to, you know, to do that. So, um, that I also think has helped me want to, you know, stay on the, on the right path. But, um, the results actually ended up being not what I was expecting. Like, um, you know, he, he had said about my, my surgeon had said about the arms, like how tight they were. He was like, I don't know what was, what got into me that day, <laughs> but I kind of thought that they would, um, you know, I would still see something there and I'm also still swollen in lots of places. So I don't know if this is the final result, but, uh, you know, I've worn yoga pants outside the house with uh, a short shirt. And, and and is that, does that feel like a miracle? Yeah. I mean, I can't wait to work out in just like normal workout clothes um, yeah. and not be, you know, like pulling on my, pulling up my t-shirt and, you know, all that, all that kind of stuff. Um, I also realized like I have no clothes um, <laughs> because you don't want to wear that stuff. And I kind of didn't realize how many inches um, the waist stuff would take off. I mean, I was trying on some jeans, uh, today and they're just like unwearable. I, I was, I said to Brett that like this, you know, this could be a, a different before picture, right? <laughs> and I was wearing these jeans, you know, two months ago. Yeah, no, the, but, but the skin around your waist, it all kind of hangs down to that point. It could add many inches to your circumference there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. They ended up taking 13 pounds of skin off total from like arms and stomach. Um, and I, because of my other surgeries, I was prepared for, you know, being bloated and not coming home and weighing 
<laughs> 13 pounds less. So it, to me, it was like a, it was a real victory to finally be 13 pounds less than, you know, the day that I went into surgery. Right. And how, you, you were at what you estimated a goal weight at the time. Um, yeah, my goal, um, when I had the consultation, I was around 200 and I kind of went to see, um, maybe this is my body. I do, you know, lift weights to some extent. And I kind of wanted confirmation, like, am I ready? Cause I see loose skin, but I'm not really sure, um, you know, what else there is. And, you know, they kind of said, well, yes, if you don't plan on losing, you know, a bunch of weight after surgery, then it would be time to do it. So I took the year and um, did more personal training, got back on track, not that I was, you know, severely off and I needed to save the money. And in that time period, I had lost like between 25 and 30 pounds. So I was kind of like glad that I didn't end up losing it because it was that situation where I don't know what my lowest is. And so when I went in for surgery, I was at 168. And so today, I can't believe I'm even saying this. Um, mostly cause that, not even the number, but that I'm sharing my weight. I'm at 153. Wow. Uh, so I've lost, uh, since the highest, like 167 pounds. So I've, I've crossed that, that path of, you know, losing more than I, I weigh. And then with my bariatric surgeon, um, because, you know, originally my goal was 175. Like that was, I thought was the, the, the goal that I should say, um, cause it was realistic, um, then it was 155. And so now I'm below that. And, um, now my goal is 145, which seems ridiculous, but then I also think that's eight pounds away. Right. That can't be the goal. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, the other thing is th there's probably no harm in hanging out where you're at now for a while and then losing eight pounds, you know, if yeah. you want to. Well, yeah. And at some point I want to get one of those DEXA scans just to kind of like have the stats, you know, right? Um, you know, particularly because, um, you know, I, I assume I've lost muscle uh, over this five weeks and however long it lasts until I can do a normal workout. Um, and then, you know, there's some that will probably come off from my thighs. And uh, then I joke, like at some point I'll add, if you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> So I want to really make sure I'm below my goal before I add. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want it to jump up inadvertently. <laughs> yep. So, um, you know, well, I guess I'll, I'll see, you know, how it is. But uh, yeah, I mean, I feel like over the next year, it's it's also kind of that thing, knowing that I want to do other surgeries. I mean, I kind of also feel like, well, maybe I'm not at the point where I should buy clothes yet. And, you know, that kind of thing. Um, so I kind of still feel like I'm in a holding pattern a little bit, but I think I need to loosen up on that, that type of stuff. You know, I'm not going to go out and buy expensive clothes, but, um, you know, buy, buy the stuff that I, I, I want to try out. Like my boyfriend gave me this shirt for Valentine's day. Um, to be clear, I don't have a boyfriend and a husband. I just kind of use them interchangeably. <laughs> I no, I thoroughly understood. Um, and yeah, it's a it's a medium women's it's it's amazing and lisa i really think you should for sure buy workout clothes mm -hmm. you know yeah i wasn't prepared for the my lululemons uh to be loose in the waist um and it's so funny because whenever i think i i hit like some milestone like now you know when i had lost uh a good portion of the weight like over 100 um i went to lululemon because I thought, well, this is where, you know, the thin people get their clothes. Well, now they have plus sizes. So it's like, <laughs> it's not even that big of a deal. But I think wearing a shirt tucked in will be a big milestone. And kind of like one of the things that I want to do when I get um, to whatever goal, like say 145, I want to buy like one of those expensive, stupid designer belts that like you have to show off or it's like a total waste of money. <laughs> right. Right. And they have the tucked in shirt and yeah. everything is revealed. Yeah. <laughs> I get, I still get a little bit, uh, it's not, I'm not angry about it, but like when I was a kid, I had to shop at big and tall man stores. Like there wasn't, you couldn't buy 
you can, I don't even think you could buy extra large at a Target when I was a kid. Yeah, they and didn't. I, have, well, they didn't even have a Target. I mean, you're probably my age. I'm forty. Yeah, uh, we're the same age, and yeah, there was no, there was like Kmart, Sears. Yeah, you could get some extended sizes, I think, like at Sears, like in the cow the catalog. I don't think they right. had them in the store. I remember I would go to the Lane Bryant or those or adult clothes and, you know, look like an idiot because the pants would be like six, eight inches too long. And, you know, thankfully my mom <laughs> knew how to sew um, or she would sell me clothes. Right. Yeah. And now you can get clothes at just about any store. Yeah. And I like part of me, you know, I'm happy for the kids now that you know are going through the same things that I went through that they they have those options so I'm not totally on the other side where I'm like can you believe they're making this stuff for kids and encouraging obesity um because sometimes like just to get through the day what you need is uh you know the trendy shirt that the other girls are wearing I mean to me it was it was shoes like I would be able I would want to have like at the very least I could have the trendy shoes or purse or something right you know, the accessories. <laughs> yeah, no, when I when um when I was a teenager and skateboarding was super cool, all the skateboarders wore Dickies, which was like such a relief to me because Dickies went up to like insane sizes. I think I had a size 80 in Dickies pants once. Um, but it made me feel like less of the you know, I had to go to the big and tall man store to buy them, but I could get the same brand pants as the other kids. Yeah, I mean, I was lucky growing up in the 90s was when you could wrap the flannel around your, and that was like super sneaky, you know, with the the little skinny flannel arms, like somehow those hid like my stomach or something. <laughs> right. Yeah, totally. I mean, you know, it was okay for girls to wear, you know, oversized things. Um, and mostly I wore like boys or not boys, but men's shorts, you know, by waist size, uh, I think maybe a 36. Um, and then, you know, extra large, extra, extra large polo shirts. Yeah. Um, okay. What was your experience with the skin removal surgery? Was it all fine? So far it's been good. I mean, there's been a couple instances of like, um, I've only had one, uh, like stitch kind of pop that needed to be re-sewn. Um, and then there are a couple places that are, um, not healing as fast um, just because of like lady time, um, one little area kind of popped right here that I'm kind of dealing with now, uh, with antibiotics. Uh, but the funny thing is, is like the pain wise, the arms were far away worse than what I was expecting than the stomach. Um, my, I found, I think a lot of the nerves in my stomach in that area got severed because i'm still a little bit numb in areas of my stomach do you have numbness um i yeah there's some some numbness i mean they encourage me to like you know feel go like this just to reactivate uh those nerves i mean there's still um plenty of scabs around the other thing that i kind of wasn't prepared for um because i had never had it on other surgeries were the drains yeah and so like god bless my boyfriend he you know, did the draining and, you know, as they came out, like one by one, um, just other tasks, like taking a shower became a lot easier, but I, I wasn't prepared for how much that would affect like my mood and how long normal things would take. Only this week did I start, uh, taking a shower in the morning. Um, you know, normally I would do it in the afternoon so I wouldn't have to be rushed and could have, you know, plenty of time to do all that stuff. Um, did the but arms require drains too? The arms didn't. Um, and actually, I am going back on one, Monday. There actually needs to be a place that has to be drained that's kind of like building up. Mm -hmm. It doesn't, but I kind of notice like this little ball, which is, I guess, goo. <laughs> goo. Yeah, if, if uh, anyone's confused about what we're talking about or doesn't know about the drains, and I would assume people who haven't done this have no idea about the drains, when you have skin removed, often they will leave literally a plastic tube in, in you that goes to like a, a little plastic ball that you compress and it slowly pulls liquid out of the internal wounds. It's, yeah, I mean, it's the body is amazing. That little thing is so amazing too because it's like nothing, but it's just suction and it somehow 
someone invented it, <laughs> but yeah. I had, I had four total. Um, and it was just for, um, you know, my abdomen. And, uh, that's the other thing is like, you think when you reach some milestone, like now I'm just down to one, um, that somehow everything's going to be better or something. Now I'm down to zero, like that. I'm still having, you know, issues with pain. I still sometimes, um, you know, walk hunched over, you know, I'm not that point yet. Um, I get kind of really annoyed that, well, shouldn't I be normal by now? I mean, next week I reached the six month, six week mark, which is supposed to be like normal activity. Um, but I don't, I, I can't imagine that I, I'll be at normal activity. I mean, I guess it depends on what you define. I mean, to me, normal activity means working out, but I think they mean like going to the grocery store. Yeah. Well, yes. And let me say, please, like, that was my biggest problem. I had, it sounds like you're doing great. Keep doing great. Take it easy. Take it slow. You don't need to rush normal activity and working out. It will all be fine. Yeah. Well, also, it's really good timing because my trainer is pregnant and she's due like any day now. So, you know, that won't be uh, an option anyway. <laughs> yeah. I'll probably do more walking than I do. Um, I mean, it's not like something magic in your body help happens at six weeks. I mean, I'll see, you know, how I feel. I mean, now, um, you know, I'm tired at, you know, 8.30 if I stand for, you know, say 10 minutes to cook dinner. So that's obviously, I'm not at normal activity yet. And just because it happens to be six weeks next Thursday, you know, I'm not going to persevere and, you know, continue to make dinner. <laughs> right. Time to run a marathon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's amazing. Lisa, I'm so happy for you. Oh, thank you. Well, I mean, it's so great to be able to to meet you via your podcast after, you know, seeing you in so much stuff and um just it's it's really cool that, you know, we were somehow brought together by uh Michael Malice of all people. <laughs> of all people, but he's a he's a secret sweetheart. I know. Like if if only people knew the truth. <laughs> yeah. He's a mush, that Michael Malice. Yeah. I mean, he's been really supportive, and I'm sure you experienced the same. And it's hard because, you know, he has his shtick during the, the podcast. I mean, like with me, you know, he was eating the entire time. <laughs> yeah. but like, I think he kept asking you, like, what your cheat food was or something like that. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I kind of don't get it sometimes, but, um, and I think then people think, like, he's being, like, super mean to me um i mean some of it was a little a little much uh because he clearly doesn't understand that we're not like rah, 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 like anytime we can you know i mean the right. questions he asked it's so different listening to y'all's conversation versus listening to you and will sass's conversation because like these are people that you know under speak the same language yeah. you know <laughs> yeah no exactly and i think you know, it, but I, it's like anything else, like this thing that you and I experienced, you can observe it and you can understand as much as much as possible by observing it. But like until you actually like ha have it experience it, mm -hmm. it's just like I can't, you know, my wife doesn't understand. My wife also doesn't understand what it is to be an alcoholic. Like you talked about your your husband's uh, bag of cookies my wife will quite often like pour herself a glass of wine and not finish it. And it makes my, like, it makes my skin crawl. Like I don't understand. Like I need her to finish the glass of wine. And she's like, I don't want to, I don't want to finish the glass of yeah, wine. I mean, it would be hell to pay if those luxury cookies don't get finished. Right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, those sound fantastic. Yeah. Those wouldn't last, you know, in, in my house when I was eating luxury cookies, those would last a night. They'd be gone. $150 worth of cookies gone. You know? So ridiculous. But, you know, Valentine's Day is when you can be ridiculous. That's right. We're allowed. <laughs> yeah. Lisa, thank you so much. I've really enjoyed well, talking to you. To help oh, me yes. Idea. Let's do it. This okay. is the prep deck. She has the prep deck. Let's pick the money. All right. So fit, first we'll pick the protein, right? Yep. Okay. No lamb, no lamb, no lamb, no lamb. White fish. White okay. fish. Easy. Easy. And by the way, 
I know white fish is a thing, but it could also be, uh, you know, any like mahi mahi cod. Yeah, I'm. Yeah. We we don't have to get so nitpicky. Yeah. All right. Here's my carb. Lentils. Hmm. Lentils. That's a fun card. Do you hate lentils? I don't dislike lentil. I like lentils. I don't have lentils right now. So this might have to be my Friday night meal. Yeah, you can pick another card too. Okay. What's your veggie? Let's see my veggie. Hold on. I'm trying to keep them in order, but I don't need to do that. I'm repicking. No cabbage. Okay. Fair. <laughs> well, and I don't like it. Spinach. Spinach. I mean, Lots I, of iron. Do you hate spinach too? I don't like spinach. You don't like spinach or cabbage. You sound like me. Zucchini. I do. All love right. There we go. Yeah, I'm Italian girl. I had to eat zucchini. So we got zucchini, leg legumes, fish. That's easy. I could do like some kind of stir fry, put the fish on top. Yeah, that sounds like a great meal. Aromatic. Spanish. Garlic, onions, pepper, tomato. That goes with delicious. Delicious. Yeah. And then what's next? The flavor. I kind of want to go straight to the snack. Israeli. I don't know if that. I don't know if that will that will work with Spanish. Yeah. Well, I mean, you don't choose all the flavors. I'm no, guessing. it's just the ideas. Yeah. I mean, so it's like garlic, turmeric, or probably not turmeric, but garlic. You know, garlic is salt to me. Um, paprika that goes with every with the Spanish for with sure. everything. Yeah. Fantastic. I do, a, do a snack before I eat. Wrap turkey breast. I love a roll up. Nice. Nice. All right. So we're having white fish with uh, legumes, garlic, onions, zucchini, and maybe some paprika and more garlic. That sounds I good. I love it. That does sound good. I'm not, it made me hungry. <laughs> now, this is really cool. You know, at first I was wondering if it was going to be like deal a meal where, um, you know, it says like the amount, but it's really just about getting out of your comfort zone, which is kind of my problem. Um, yeah. You know, my wife, it, it really, yes. I had a bunch of people ask me, this is deal meal. It's not a diet. It's not a diet at all. It really is for people who diet a lot. And what happens for me when I diet a lot is I eat the same thing and then I get so sick of it and I don't know what to eat. And I made that, you know, mostly because my wife kept calling me while I was out of town going, what should I buy at the grocery store? You know, and what should I eat tonight? And I was like, here's a list of stuff, eat any of this. And she said, how do I flavor it? And I said, here's a bunch of options, you know, but I think, um, you know, doing blue apron that kind of gives you ideas more for preparation, mm -hmm. you know, cause it's, it's not, it's really too much for, you know, a half person like me and one normal person. But um, yeah, I, I mean, I found it really helpful at the very least just for, you know, even if I wasn't doing it the proper way, just like looking at different different flavors, like the aromatic one, you kind of forget what's an aromatic. Why does restaurant food taste so good? It's because they're adding an element of each of these things. Yeah. Yeah. No. And I know some of them aren't going to work. Like somebody wrote to me, like I tried uh, tuna fish with Chinese spices and it didn't taste good. And I'm like, okay, well now, you know, that doesn't taste good. Don't make that again. Y you know? Um, but to be honest with you, I think I could make a delicious Chinese flavored tuna fish salad. Well, isn't, isn't tuna in sushi? Yeah. But that's Japanese, Lisa. We have to know our, our different oh, Asian I cuisines. <laughs> I don't eat sushi. Well, I've, I've had like the fake sushi or cooked sushi. I love Texas. What do you want from me? They have it at the H E B. Right. Which <laughs> I always I always think of as Heb. I know. The H E B they have uh but they make sushi for Texans. Like you can buy sushi with pulled pork on top. Really? Just yeah. rice and pulled pork. That actually sounds pretty it's good. It's like real sushi. Like it has the fish and stuff in it, but it has like um pulled or it might have like avocado, some kind of southwest flavor, but it has fish and like pulled pork on top. Um, wow. 
and like others. I'll have to take a picture and, and send it to you. <laughs> Please do. Yeah, I want to see that. That sounds insane. I tried it. it I would good. try it. Yeah, it was good. Yeah. But it's still like rice averse. <laughs> You're still anti rice. Yeah, I mean, I like rice. Like, uh, my husband buys the big, you know, 20 pound brown rice and, you know, it, it, they make it in California and it, it does taste really good. It comes out creamy, like almost like risotto. Um, but to me, I just can't get like that many carbs packed in. Like if I'm going to have a quarter cup of something, um, I don't want to waste my car. I'd rather have the one bite of the luxury cookie. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and use my meal for something else. <laughs> for protein and veggies. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> It's amazing. I feel cheating after all these years. <laughs> and and you, but you know what? You're doing it in a way that's working. Mm -hmm. That's true. Yeah, it feels weird to say that. Like I don't want to seem like full of myself, but that's what it kind of sucks. Like I'm so I was so happy to be able to do this podcast because so much of my public stuff that I've done, you know, has been you know weighing. 300 pounds and you know I've been grateful that so many opportunities were given to me you know at that to be able to be a commentator to be able to write books and um you know do media for them and you know all that stuff that I kind of thought uh would be out of reach for me but you know there have been people like um uh, you know Greg Gutfeld who have given me opportunities uh you know to be able to to be there because at the very least he thought I had some talent uh, or were funny, it was funny. <laughs> right. Well, this has been, this has been lovely. I'm so happy for you and I'm glad you got the surgery. And, and I know we talked before and I gave you all of my horror stories and I'm glad that didn't dissuade you from it. And I'm glad it was a success. Congratulations. I didn't hear your horror stories beforehand. You just told me there was an incident and that you right. went after. And so when I was watching the Sasso podcast, I accidentally heard it. But then when you said, after like the first day then I was like, Oh, I'm not worried about this happening to me. <laughs> yeah, no, no. I, I mean, I had to have blood transfusions. It was, it was awful. My experience was awful. And, and, you know, I, today I'm very glad I did it, but I, I, I don't think I could do my legs and I've, you know, I had no skin removed from them. So the fact that you, got what you got done and are thinking about the next one i'm i'm just like kudos to you i'm so happy for you thank you well i've heard these the stomach is the hardest one so i'm hoping like having that one out of the way uh helps <laughs> yes well there's no way there's they've got 13 pounds of skin on your legs to remove not possible mm -hmm. yeah i think so <laughs> but if i find myself getting uh not getting to that 145 quick enough then maybe i'll i'll <laughs> Age to the thigh one. Or again, get rid of the number. The number doesn't matter. No, you're wait. you're you're it's... such a rock star right now. What does it matter? Yeah, it doesn't matter. Um, you know, like I said, I I never even thought I would be in a oh, medium size shirt. And like when he gave it to me yesterday, I was like, I was like, oh, it's I hope it doesn't hurt his feelings that it doesn't fit. You right. Know? Yeah, I think that that's been me with every article of clothing my wife has ever given me, and yep. but it, and and honestly, it's still a miracle if it fits. She, mm -hmm. I get a lot of clothes that still don't fit. She's like, "You're a large, right?" No, nope, never been a large. <laughs> Extra large at best. Yeah. <laughs> yep. So I'm in I'm in medium land at least in some things, but you know, sizing is so weird. There's also things you know I'm gonna have to get rid of. The fact that there might be a store where I am a large or maybe an extra large and it right. doesn't because I haven't changed, you know, if I'm saying the same, uh, it's just weird sizing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, a hundred percent. I like, uh, there's a brand I like that's made in Italy and I think I'm a three X in that because it's Italian sizing and they're all tiny, tiny little people. Not mm -hmm. Italian Americans from the South. Italians from Italy are tiny little people. Some Italians from the South are tiny. Yeah, but uh, but yeah, and that always makes me feel bad about myself. But it's like I didn't get bigger to wear this shirt. It the shirt is just small. Yeah, that's like the the horrible cheap stuff you can buy on like Amazon and Timu or something that you know has the Chinese sizing, and you know a normal person could be like a four X. Right. Exactly. Yeah, it's not our fault.
They're yeah. just small. <laughs> uh, All right, Lisa. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me.